So now, now that we have the ruler postulate in place, now that we have a connection where every line is a number line, let's take a look at what we mean by a coordinate function. So a coordinate function is a one-to-one -one correspondence, a bijection, call it f, from the set of points on a line L to the set of real numbers such that the distance from P to Q, where P and Q are on line L, is the absolute value of F of P minus F of Q for all P and Q on L. If you have such a function, that's called a coordinate function, and F of P is called the coordinate for P. So when we took a look at this X and this Y, those could very well have been coordinates, and that makes sense because on this slide, it seems reasonable that if this is the line, then this number that corresponds to P is basically a coordinate, and then it makes sense that subtracting two coordinates in a one-dimensional system should give us the distance between the points. So this is one of those things that makes sense. Um, if you're using the standard Cartesian metric, the standard distance formula that we've used for years, uh, you might use f of x, y is x times the square root of 1 plus m squared. Uh, this will generate coordinates for you. Uh, so it, it's a way to take two inputs and create one output. Um, if you are using the taxicab metric, and the taxicab metric was the one where you just add the horizontal distance and add the vertical distance and add those up, uh, you might use f of x, y is x times 1 plus absolute value of m. And that will take two inputs and generate one output. Uh, because the coordinate function applies to the points on the line. It doesn't apply to the system as a whole. So those are things to keep in mind. Um, this gets a lot of use for us. This one right here matters. The ruler placement postulate says that for every distinct P and Q, there's a coordinate function F from the points on line PQ to the real numbers such that F of P is zero and F of Q is positive. Well, why? Why do we do that? Well, if you have a point here called P and another point here called Q, and you had a physical ruler, if you actually had a physical ruler, how would you measure the distance between those points? You would put your you would put your one point here at zero. You'd put zero at zero. And then, oh, here's how bad I am with this one. Well, you'd try to line this up. Oh, that's nice. You'd try to line this up, and wherever the point Q ended up, that would be the distance between the points, right? That's how we use a ruler. We put the ruler so that one part is on P, and then we want the other point to be on Q. And then that distance is the distance between, so that's the distance between P and Q. Uh, the ruler placement postulate is called the ruler placement postulate because you can always place your ruler so that P is on zero and Q is some positive number. And if Q were to magically, sorry, if Q were to magically go over here, we're not overly concerned about that because we can, if I've done this right... Turn the ruler around. In theory, we can turn... Well, you could turn the ruler around. I can't, but you could. Um, one thing about the ruler placement postulate and the ruler postulate, it leads to the betweenness theorem. The betweenness theorem says let three points be on a line, and we're going to let f be a function, a coordinate function, from the set of points on line L to the set of real numbers. We say that A 
then C, then B, or really C is between A and B, if and only if the coordinates go up or the coordinates go down. So you have some line, you have three points on the line, and there's some coordinate function, some bijection that applies to this line. Well, if the coordinates go up, then C is between A and B. If the coordinates go down, then C is between A and B, but it has to be one or the other. Okay? So that gives you a good idea of what we do with the ruler postulate and some important consequences. Next up is plane separation.